there's something something about the scale of it, the the kinds of objects that it makes tends to be things that people interact with a lot, like chairs, furniture, the woodwork in houses. It's just something that creates objects of a real human scale, and it has really nice properties to work with. It's 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 really organic. It, it has it has character. It's just, it's just something that I actually I feel really intimate about. These ideas will pop up where it's just like you, you can't rush through the problem. You just have to. Let it, let it, let it come to the surface. Those, those ideas are floating around out there. Where are you from, man? I'm um, from Newton, Kansas, originally. Um, moved to Lawrence to go to college, and I've been here since. My parents were furniture collectors and antiques, and so I had some experience where they'd have something that was in pieces and I'd try to put it together. Dad had a shock and it just really was something that excited me, and so uh, I haven't really got focused on anything else. It took all my attention and it's been enjoyable since. There's, there's so many beautiful trees around and in fact even trees in town they, they oftentimes get larger because they're not crowded by other trees and so they're a really good wood source and then also when I have a piece that's made of woods, of trees that I see, it just seems so organic to the area, like it belongs here. I mean, even though it's a piece that I just made, it feels like it's already aged, like it, it's, it could be real old. I've got a friend who's got a tree service business. Um, most of the tree service businesses, when they remove a tree, the wood goes to the dump, especially the trunks, and uh, just thought that you know that's the most useful part in terms of wood. So uh, this guy's been bringing me the logs, and I've got another friend who can do the shop sawmill. Saws, saws up the wood for me, and I've been drying it. Um, just starting to do that, but a lot of the stuff that I build is, is from wood that's been sawn around here by other people, just because it, it does take you know, quite a while to dry, a year or more, a couple of years, to get it to the right moisture content. So, when I don't have what I need on hand, that I've directly milled and dried, I can go to somebody who is in the business of doing that, and it's, it's always wood that's harvested around here. I think what I'm liking more recently is woods that I know where they came from. I like working with local material, even a tree that I knew was there. Tell me a little bit about the uh, tools that you use. I mean, how would how would your workshop compare with what you might find in a, in a factory, you know, in a, a furniture factory? How is what you have different? Um, my tools they they would involve quite a bit more time than something in a factory. Where in a factory they would have extremely expensive tools and they would set it up for maybe one operation and then. They would stick the board in there, 
and it would perform that operation very quickly. And they would, they, you know, they'd have thousands or hundreds of these boards cut to the same size, stick it in there, do the operation that many times in a row. So my tools are more for setting up smaller kinds of productions, you know, one of a kind or a few of a kind. Um, and so, you know, it takes, it definitely takes longer to produce that way, but uh, my, my shop's very versatile because I can do just about anything that you can imagine. So what does this process do? kind of rough sanding it right now it's got planer marks in it uh, passing it through the planer which chips off the wood to get it the thickness you want and i sand it just to get it smooth i'll probably have to have to pass all the wood through multiple times to get it smooth it will have to be uh, sanded by hand if, if there's something that is too hard to do with the machinery tools that you have, there's always a way to do it by hand. It's just slower, but sometimes you have to do that because if every piece is unique, you're going to run into situations that you've never done before. Inspired by the trees which the wood comes from and the way those branches branch up and the, the trunk has a mass to it which makes it possible to support all that weight and so a chair leg or a table leg has to resemble that in a way because of the weight that it carries. A lot of the joints that I do, I mean, they fit together tight when you make them and then the wood is at a dried state and it's drier than the environment that it's actually going to go into and so once it gets in its new environment, it, it pulls a little moisture into it, and so it just tightens everything up. I glue it, which holds it, and put it on here. Cut a groove through it, put a spline in it, and that way I glue long grain to long grain through it, and so it, it ties it together, and it makes it a much stronger joint. The joinery is the main thing, because that's something that's been developed, I mean, for hundreds, thousands of years. And, uh, the old joinery is something that, that it just stays together um, compared to most manufactured furniture. The, since most people aren't really familiar with the joinery, they don't know what to look for. And so they make a piece of furniture which looks good but may not be something that will last. Geometry in like mathematical terms is certainly a way to make things come together. Um, and it, and it at least allows for a basis to start getting things to come together. And since wood is a natural material, it, it expands and grows, it breathes. And so uh, there's a, a certain amount of unpredictability about it. The geometry allows you to get close, and then the rest of it, you have to respond to the fact that it is something that's moving and breathes. It's just interesting because you have a tree that has growth rings, and that it's kind of undulating as it goes up, but when you cut a plane through it, it's hitting those grains differently. And so it's just a cross between that total chaos and the order. I made some jewelry yeah. out of wood and different materials. Um, jewelry boxes, larger jewelry boxes, chairs, different sizes, dining chairs, lounging chairs, couches, um, let's see, uh, tables, dressers, wardrobe. I mean, I, I really hope that they all outlive me, you know, they should. Get in contact with me and I usually get together with a person or people. Um, I like to see the environment that it's going in a lot of the time. Uh, just talk to them in terms of what their needs are, how, how big does the table need to be, or whatever, and how can I make it so that it, it looks like it belongs in that environment. Um, and just, I often will ask them what, what kinds of furniture do they like, and they can show me pictures, and I can use that as inspiration. Getting to do what I want.